And, you know, it's going to be an interesting debate because, you know, Otani's, because so much is deferred, it's going to be teams will be looking at the present value of his deal, which is like $46 million a year, not the 70. But chances are Scott's going to be looking at 700 no matter how it's paid off, right, or paid out. Right. Scott you wants know? to win, have the highest. Doesn't he no a guy doubt. that wants the highest contract No doubt. Ever? Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, you make a good point, too. I don't know how many teams can really get into the conversation even. You know it's yeah. going to be over five, right? At least. Oh yeah, yeah. He turned down four forty a few years yeah. ago so, from Washington. You know who's who's capable of doing that? Well, I think he's got New York the team teams. around him to to support that. Yeah, yeah. You and mentioned the three. That's the three. Yeah, that's the three. Now listen to this, Ned. I, I came up with this, and I'm thinking the Dodgers are financial guys. Guggenheim, I I I I've been given tickets from Guggenheim to sit right behind home plate with the Dodgers. Cause I sell, you know, Guggenheim's one of the companies I represent. If the Dodgers wanted to get creative, they can give say 14 years and they can pay him like 35 million a year, which amounts to about 490 over, you know, he makes about 35 a year. They can defer 250 and make it, you know, close to a 740 contract, let's say. Dodgers put in 250 into it a 14 year annuity. That thing's worth going to be worth 600 million in 14 years. So in essence, they made 350 on the deal and they pay him really only the 5 the 490 because the other money they're putting in it's their money and they're making money on it. They turn around and pay Soto out 10 20 years deferred and it's not costing them anything because they made money on the annuity just with interest. And it's, a, it's a wonderful plan and Guggenheim, that's what they do. I've done it for clients myself. I think if they can convince Soto that to take a little less, but you're going to be set for until you're 50 or 60 years old with checks coming in every year for 10 plus million dollars a year. Maybe twenty million if he wants it over ten. I mean, to me, it's it's simple. Go sign with the team that you know is you can pencil in the playoffs opening day. I mean, and oh, then yeah. you make more money. You make more money. You make World Series money. You you enjoy the the relationships. And one of the things that really struck me this year, um, Ned. Just last week, I heard Aaron Judge talk about his time with uh, playing with Soto. He said he was so impressed with leadership skills of Soto that he was a leader in the clubhouse. He was sh led by example, always out there taking BP early, late. He was a guy that really, really wants to win. And you get around guys like Freeman and Betts and Kershaw. I heard Rojas say the other day, that Freeman and Betts and Kershaw were all over everybody, making sure that they did their job and they watched those three in their their work ethic. Even though Kershaw was not playing much, he still was the big leader. He's been the longest tenured Dodger Dodger there. So everybody's looking at those guys. So you bring in another guy, and I'm I'm thinking the Dodgers. Why wouldn't you do it? Because you could end up having a cap coming at some point where you can't sign a guy like Soto. Well, there won't be no cap. You don't so, see that happening. Well, There'll be a big, big, long no. strike, huh? No, but you make, but you make good, good points. You know, I, there's, there's no doubt that there, that there's big time discussions going on. That's how they think. Just the way you laid it out too, from the financial aspect of it. That's how they think. That's you know everybody was you know taken aback by the Otani deal, and then you see how it's structured, and you know you know you know how how they think, and you go, what a brilliant, brilliant deal for everybody, and obviously it paid off huge. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just thinking as as players get together, you know, Soto's been in the league since he's 19. 
So he's been playing seven, eight years. He's won a World Series championship. He's lost in the World Series. But in between, he hasn't really made too many playoff appearances. No, but you know, not that that's not his fault necessarily. Right. But does he if he really wants to win, the, the word out is is that he wants to a team, he wants to know. I mean, Shohei set the standard last year he wants to know everything what's the organization's plan what's your plan going forward what who you got in the minors who are you going to else bring in and what's your plan to keep this going not too many teams can say that even no. the Mets even the Mets and um, Cohen got rid of DeGrom and Scherzer kind of rebuilt it but he he spent the money and then he got rid of it and he's going to reload it but you know he doesn't seem like this, I mean, it's a pretty good place to play any anywhere you play in, in with those fans back in New York. But I do think it comes down to those three teams. And I think if it gets into a bidding war, Cone's crazy enough maybe just to, to outbid them all. But does mm-hmm. but I, I, I I'm 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 gonna hold on to the the Dodgers. I think it, it would be uh you know. It would be a smart move on their part because how often does a superstar come available at 26 years of age? The last one was what Bryce Harper was young. Most of them are 30. Sign him. Yeah, most of them are 30 now, right? The, oh yeah. The, you, you hit free agency and and really after 35, you don't see a ton of production out of too many players. There's a few. Yep. Nope. So, and we can pretty much, I think we can book Sasaki. What about Willie Adamas? Is he going to be a Dodger, do you think? Or do you think he lands somewhere else? I think there's a good chance. I, I, you know, a lot of teams, I mean, you can go back to the Marlins that won two World Series and, and disbanded the team the next winter. You know, I think the way the Dodgers are are constituted, they will, winning a World Series like they just did and the emotion that came with it and the parade and the entire experience that just fuels those guys. That just makes them want to continue to do it over and over again. And the people I've talked to in the last week, I mean, they, that's the mindset. So this is not going to be a step back. This is not going to be, Hey, let's rest on our laurels. Hey, you know, we can, we can ride this way for a little while. No, it's, it's about another one. And then another one, and then another one. That's and, exactly and that's what I've been saying. That's a, it's crazy. That's what I've been saying. They have, they know that their rivals to the north, the last decade won three of five, and they heard all about. Oh, you guys can't win the big one. You won. We won three of five. We won. You know, Giants won three of five. You guys get in. You can't win. I think the Dodgers, not just thinking about repeating, they're thinking about three peating. And oh, I don't have any maybe doubt. maybe becoming like the twenty the nineteen twenties Yankees where they win four or five in a row. Yep. Or the forty nine to fifty three Yankees too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is you don't get this type of situation that often where you have three superstars that are not just superstars, but they're great people. And yep. they love what they're doing. And, you know, I've said Freddie Freeman, I mean, he's the type of guy that, you know, nothing gets him out of the lineup. I mean, he missed that that high ankle sprain had to be pretty bad for him to take a day off or two in the playoffs. Yes. But the fact is he got himself well. He wins the MVP. And, you know, I'm not a Dodger fan, but I definitely was happy for Freddie because as what he went through with his son, Max, and in the, in the, and then, you know, we all know his story. If you know Freddie Freeman's story, losing his mother as a 10 year old boy, very close to his mother. And you see his closest with his dad and just being the type of guy he is for him to be able to come through that way. uh, You know, if anybody had to do it, I'm glad it was Freddie because I, I'm I root for the player. I mean, I I'm 
you know, I'm a diehard Giants fan, but as I get older, I, I now root more for the players a lot just because, you know, you don't want to see anybody fail, really. It, you know, but when guys that are good guys and they've done the work and they come through, it's good to see. So I think the fact that they have these guys and it's a limited time, it can hap- it can close quickly the door. So they've got those three guys, and if they can add another superstar or two, like you said, Ned, they're not thinking, oh, we got our one. We finally got the monkey off our backs. We don't have the 2020 people to talk about with no parade, 60 games. We got a, a you know first full season World Series since 88. Now we can sit back. No, they want to <laughs> they want to just – like you said, the 49 through 53 Yankees, they would love to have that record. Yeah. Or the or the 98 Yankees for yeah, three in a row. Until yeah. you get to the, the Diamondback series. Yeah. Yeah, they almost did four, right? Yeah, they did what 96, seven, and eight. 96, 98, 99, 2000. Yeah, that was yeah, and they lost in 2000 to the D backs, right? Yeah. 2001, so, they lost to the D backs. Yeah. 